Welcome to day four of our series of prayer, reflections and meditations on this season of Thy Kingdom Come between Ascension and Pentecost. Today we are in the chapel, the St Agnes Chapel of St German's Church here in Cardiff and we will be reflecting today on our theme, I do not call you servants any longer but I have called you friends. And our reading today by Natasha is from Romans 8 and Luke chapter 11. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. Lord, teach us to pray. As we gather in prayer, as we consider how God calls us to be one, to be holy, to be apostolic in our mission and universal in our outreach, we ask God to bless us, to be with us in this time of prayer, conscious of our ongoing need of mercy and forgiveness. A reading from Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit also comes to help us, weak as we are, for we do not know how we ought to pray. The Spirit himself pleads with God for us. It groans that words cannot express. And God who sees into our hearts knows that we thought of the Spirit. Because the Spirit pleads with God on behalf of his people and in accordance with his will. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St Luke starting at chapter 11, verses 1 to 4. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, When you pray, say this, Father, May your holy name be honoured, may your kingdom come. Give us day by day the food we need, forgive us our sins, for we forgive everyone who does us wrong. And do not bring us to hard testing. God thirsts for relationship with us searches out for us, searches for us just as he searched for Adam in the garden saying, where are you? And I wonder how many of us in our lives have had some similar experience of being sought out by God. Jesus in his ministry sought out intimate time with God all the way through his journeying, all the way through the different friendships and encounters he had with disciples, with outcasts, with different people of all sorts. At the heart of what he did and how much he gave of himself day in, day out, the source of this was that encounter with his father in prayer. In his teaching to us, he introduces us to what was most precious to him, the relationship of love with his Father, who is also our Father. Jesus and the disciples, we know, were loyal Jews, and we could see that in the Last Supper, but also in their ongoing lives of prayer, singing psalms together. And the later Christians, as we hear in the Acts of the Apostles and in Paul's letters, were loyal to that Jewish tradition of praying as God has taught them to, using the resources of the Hebrew scriptures uh, as the beginning of their prayer, but also leading them to be open to God's spirit in free and spontaneous moments of prayer. Indeed, our experience of prayer as disciples, as those who are on, are on a like, a similar journey, to the first disciples could be well liturgical 
this space here is a place where liturgical prayer is perhaps the main vehicle of people's encounter with God. But it's also a time of peace, a time of quiet, and churches throughout the world, not just our land, are places where people come to as oases of calm, looking for wonder, looking for inspiration, or just simply a place to rest or to bask in the presence of God. Sometimes in walking, sometimes in moments of silence, but the desire to pray is always there, never too far away from that human experience of making sense of who they are and where they're going in life. I wonder, is it something that we can choose not to do, or rather something that just lets left behind at times? As we gather this evening and reflect on how Jesus taught us to pray, we ask God to make that an ongoing teaching, an ongoing learning, that each day we are continually renewed and shown how much prayer can lead us into fullness of life and help us at the moments when we are most weak. Sometimes in our churches and in this time of lockdown, we pray by singing, but we're not allowed to sing. And so we listen sometimes to music and that can lift and calm the soul and heart and mind and create a real sense of communion with the God who made us, who sustains us, who brings us into fullness of life. But in this week of prayer, we are called to pray for the unity of Christians, not just those in our own tradition. And it is a feature of the last 100 years or so that uh, different Christians from different traditions have given voice to that desire within them, that voice, that desire that was echoed in the prayer of Jesus, may they be one, Father, as you and I are one, that we pray this prayer of Jesus together. May we be one. May we be able to overcome all divisions and worship the one true God together. And I suppose in that moment, we discover the power of God's Spirit that can unite us and inflame our hearts with a vision of unity. And so we now pause to pray. We ask you, O oh Lord, to give us the gift of prayer in our daily lives. To give us a desire to spend time and attention on you and on our relationship with you. O oh Holy Spirit, we ask you to teach us to help us to be open to how people who are different from ourselves pray and respond to you and respond to the words of our Saviour, Jesus. We pray for the communities that we, in, to which we belong, perhaps families, work communities, or even faith communities, parishes and other churches throughout the world. We ask that we might also have a desire not to pray alone, but to pray with others, to share bread with them, and to be loyal in our response to God, who called us to do this in memory of him. We pray for peace to come into our world. We pray for those people who are praying virtually, whose only access to a, a community of prayer is through things like Zoom or Facebook. We ask you, O oh Lord, to inspire our common prayer, to sustain us as we take time each day to renew our personal intimacy with our Lord. And so we pray, Lord Jesus, your entire life was prayer, perfect harmony with the Father. 
Through your Spirit, teach us to pray according to your will of love. May the faithful of the whole world unite in intercession and prayer. And may your kingdom of love come. Amen. And so we end our time of prayer this evening as we gather, as we pray together. Please join us again tomorrow for the next stage of our journey to Pentecost. And we pray that God's Spirit may change us and transform us into the disciples we are called to.